My name is Edward Liu. I'm a gynecologist, obstetrician here in uh, Los Angeles. We are out of New York and we're in the sunny Los Angeles. It's uh, not snowing. It's not snowing. Dr. Liu, who I've known for many years, who delivered Taylor into this world, um, I want to talk to you about something that is uh, it's getting a little attention in my book and it's something that you and I have discussed over the years because you and I have a very open relationship. Um, I want to talk about sex. We're not having sex, ladies and gentlemen. Ed and I, Ed and I already, no, we're not we having sex. We know each other real well, but, but uh, no, not I that mean, well, no. But when people, in, okay, let's just go right to here. In terms of 50, is yes. 50 the new 30 sexually? Unfortunately, 50 is not. I mean, people want to think that 50 is the new 30, but, you know, the, and there's a whole difference between men and women, since we're talking mostly about women, since that's my forte. Women are 50 Having or, sex with them or dealing with them? No, dealing with oh. them. I'm not, uh, you know, my, my wife is, uh, you know, she, uh, but uh, regardless. Um, the 50-year-old woman is not as sexual as she was at 30, and that's due to any number of reasons, um, primarily because of the hormones. And, and whether they're perimenopausal or menopausal, they're close to not having hormones, and hormones really do affect the libido. Um, I think oftentimes when your girlfriend suggests to you that they're having sex multiple times a week uh, with their husband of uh, 30 years, they're probably lying because uh, I think their expectation is that you are having that much sex and therefore they want to try and impress you by telling you that they're having as much sex as you are. But the reality is probably less. There are lots more concerns in the minds of a 50-year-old than, than what she had when she was 30. Um, there are friends who are getting ill. The, they themselves may be on medication for blood pressure or diabetes or, or high cholesterol. It's a different animal at 50. But people, I think, feel like badly. Or I think they feel like they're getting older or they're embarrassed. And people, it's a, people will talk about a lot of stuff, but if you say to people, like, is your sex life good? Everyone kind of instantly wants to go, oh, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I mean, people are really, are they embarrassed? I mean, what, what it, goes through our heads? Do we just make it feel like we're dying or we're getting old when it, this happens? It's not necessarily a subject that patients bring up, and oftentimes you have to elicit it from them. Um, you know, certainly women in their 50s who are going through the menopausal changes will complain about vaginal dryness, and that's a segue to, well, gee, if your vagina is a little bit dry, and uh, when you have sex, is it as comfortable? And all of a sudden, the reality comes out, mm, no, not so much. And then we have to address the whole issue of, well, you know, how are we going to take care of it? Um, what's what's going on in your mind versus what's going on in your vagina? Are you on hormones? Bah, 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 bah. And the reality is that you can get back to some of those same sensations that you had when you were younger, but you have to use modern chemistry. You have to use medicine. And there's that whole controversy, as you know, about hormone replacement. But there's a whole world of difference between taking hormones systemically that goes throughout your body, takes away the hot flashes and night sweats, blah, 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 versus using estrogen vaginally. Estrogen vaginally doesn't get absorbed. It stays in the vagina, makes you, makes the vagina a little bit um, more accommodating than, you know, perhaps it is, and certainly makes it feel a lot softer, and like the old days. And, but, but people But it doesn't make you horny doesn't make you horny. The horniness has, if you feel dry, you're not going to feel horny. If you feel wet and you're slimy and you know, everything else, you're going to want to have sex. But there's also medicine that we can give for, to increase the libido. And, you know, libido is not just wanting to have sex. Libido is masturbation. Do you still masturbate? You know, that's a question that oftentimes I'll ask. And it's not something the patient's going to come in and say, hey, gee, you know what? Um, I'm not masturbating anymore. What can you do about it? It's that's too personal. But if you ask the question, the patients will respond. And if the masturbation is on, then, you know, it's, it's out of mind. It's, out, it's not within the interest. Um, but that can be restored. Testosterone, which men have, which certainly gives us our libido, 
is sometimes missing once the hormones, once the estrogen hormones start going away. Yeah, but you guys kind of lose some testosterone too. Totally, but we've got Cialis, we've got Viagra, we've got, you know, four-hour medicines that we should call our doctor if, uh, if it goes beyond four hours. And then your head falls off. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So, so, what, so aside from just the medicine of it all, is it just kind of you got to accept like this is where you are in your? I mean, to a certain degree, this is this is where you are in your life. I mean, what's not necessary? I mean, there's a, there's a whole bunch of things that go into sexuality and um, femininity at that age, and you know, oftentimes women's self image is different at at that age versus the thirty. Um, Relationships may be a little bit staler, or it may be just old. Not not necessarily old, but in terms of longevity, they've been in relationship 30, 40, 50 years. Um, and it's different. It's it's different than uh, if you're a 50-year-old that's uh, on, on the verge of a new relationship. There's that, you can feel dry and ugly, and you still want to have sex. So, okay, so in closing <coughs> this up here, if you're just like, so... Three pieces of advice from you for people who, let's say, aren't so cha-cha-cha like they were at 30. What do you think we should do? I, I think that, A, it's a matter of self-confidence, number one. The self-image. If uh, you feel good about yourself, I think that automatically the sexuality and the desire, uh, whether it be by yourself or with a partner, that will return. I think that one shouldn't be afraid, necessarily, of hormones. You know, I know there's controversy in terms of that, but one shouldn't necessarily be afraid of it. And you should talk to your doctor about what might be best for you. Um, and and thirdly, you know, the most important thing is don't necessarily believe what your girlfriends tell you about how often they're having sex because they're probably lying. Well, Ed Lou, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk about this again soon. Okay. <laughs>